Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about inline variables. So one of the issues that we can run into when working with global variables is violations of the one definition rule or ODR. So violations of ODR is something we've looked at, you know, in previous videos, primarily centered around header files and compilation. So we've seen how we can accidentally include header files multiple times, and that will lead to uh, redefinition errors at compile time. We also saw how we could get around this problem by using things like header guards or, or things like pragma once. Now redefinition errors can occur at more than just compile time. So we can also hit redefinition errors at link time. So what we're going to be looking at is a simple example where we hit a redefinition error at link time with a global variable. And then we'll also see how we can get around this problem by making this global variable an inline variable. So let's go ahead and look at the kind of core header file um, you know, for this uh, example, and that's going to be this global.h. So we'll go ahead and open up this global.h, and inside of here, we just have a single global variable defined and declared, just some integer called global value that we set equal to zero. Now this is, say, some header file we want to include in a few different source files, so say in, uh, for use in some you know, update function and also, say, directly inside of our main function. So let's see how this gets used elsewhere in, say, some CPP files. So one place is going to be this function.cpp file where we include global.h. And we have a function you know, defined here called update value. This is just going to add some integer value to our global value here. And to go along with this uh, function.cpp file, we have a function.h uh, file here that includes a prototype for this update value function. Right. And this is something we'll include inside of main.cpp. Now, another place where you know, we'll use both this function and this global is inside of, you know, like I said, main.cpp. So inside of here, it's pretty simple. We include IO stream so we can do some printing. We include function.h and global.h so we can um, you know, get access to this uh, update value function as well as, well as this global variable called global value. And we'll both directly update global value by adding 10 to this integer. And we'll also you know, have a call to update value here where we'll pass a value of 10. And then finally, we'll try to print out global value here. So we should see 20 um, get printed out, right? So 10 plus 10 should give us 20. So let's go ahead and see how we can compile this and where we might hit some problems. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we'll compile our source files here, function.cpp and main.cpp down to object code. So we'll do g++ c on function.cpp. So we see that compiles down to object code uh, just fine. So we went through pre-processing, compilation, and assembly. No issues related to the one definition rule. And we can do the exact same thing for main.cpp. And again, that compiles just fine. So no violations of the one definition rule, right? No redefinition errors. So let's see what happens when we try to link these two pieces of object code together to create an executable. That's really the final step in creating an executable here. So we'll do G++ and we'll pass our two input files, function.o and main.o, and we'll try to create an executable called main. And what we see is we get a, a redefinition error, right? You see our linker, LD, is complaining at us that we have multiple definitions of this global value here. So that's our global integer that we have inside of global.h here. So another way we can look at this is by looking at the symbols in these two pieces of object code. And we can use this tool nm for that. So let's run nm on function.o. Uh, and you can see that inside of function.o, we have this global, va uh, this global value symbol, right? And it has this b next to it. So we can open up the man page for nm to see what that means. So we can go ahead and scroll down on this man page. And you can see that this, uh, this uppercase B or lowercase B means that the symbol is in the BSS data section, right? Which uh, typically contains zero initialized or uninitialized data, right? So we have some symbol that's defined inside of this, this object code here. Now, if we go ahead and do the exact same thing, right? In M, but this time on main.o, what we can see is that main also has this global value symbol defined, right? And it's also in this BSS data section. So both of these pieces of object code have the symbol defined, so we get this clash when we try to link them together. 
Uh, now, there's a number of different ways that we can get around this problem, right? So one of the ways is we could just inside of that header file for global, we could just make it an extern int, right? And we can actually move the say um, definition to some source file, right? And we'll link against that later. Um, but another way that we can handle this problem is by just making this uh, global variable an inline variable using this inline specifier. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I have the CPP reference page for this inline specifier um, you know, up on the screen, and I'll make sure to link this below the video. And there's a very important line down here in the explanation. So under this bullet point two uh, in this, this subsection one here. So, you know, with these, uh, you know, inline functions or variables. So inline variables came into C++ as part of C++ 17. So when we have an inline variable with external linkage, like we have with this global variable, um, by marking as inline, this is saying that there may be more than one definition of some inline variable in the program as long as each definition appears in a different translation unit and um, it still has to have um, you know, identical definitions between these translation units. So all this is saying is that you know, we still have to obey normal one definition rule things. So we can't have say two integers named global variables inside of the same source file at the same scope. That's, that would still be a violation of the one definition rule, but we can have multiple definitions in different translation units. So I can have a global variable inside of um, main.cpp and a global variable uh, or some global value um, inside of function.cpp, right? And as long as those two things look the same, I'm allowed to have those multiple definitions. And it's okay to link those files together. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So we can go ahead and open up this uh, global.h and we'll just make one small change here. We'll change this from just being a normal integer to being an inline, uh, an inline variable here by just giving it this inline keyword. So we can go ahead and quit out of here, and let's go ahead and start recompiling everything. So we can first um, recompile main.cpp, right, and generate some object code out of it, and then we can do the exact same thing for functions uh, or function.cpp and regenerate that object code. And then we can also look at those symbols again, right, with nm. So we can do nm on main.o, and you can see that, um, you know, something's changed for our global value here. It now has this um, u, lowercase u next to it rather than that uppercase b. So again, we can go back into the man page for nm and see what that lowercase u means. So we can you know, scroll down here, and we can see that the lowercase u means that the symbol is a unique global symbol. So by marking this as inline, um, we're able to say, hey, this isn't some you know, variable that's specific to this translation unit uh, that we're going to be using, right? It's something that can be used across different translation units, right? And it's still the same thing, right? It's a unique global symbol, right? Rather than just a local one for this specific um, you know, piece of object code. Okay, so let's go ahead and you, know, we, you can see that this is also the case for say function.o. Right, it now has this lowercase u for the symbol global value as well, right? So it's this unique global symbol that we're using. And you can see that we can now compile um, or link these two pieces of object code together into an executable, right? And we go, don't get a redefinition error, right? Because instead of just having, you know, some normal global here that has multiple, you know, definitions inside of different source files that lead to a redefinition error. Because we marked it as inline, we no longer get that problem, right? Specifically, it says in the documentation that there may be more than one definition of this inline function or variable. And we can, of course, run this, and we get the expected result of 20 here, right? We added 10 directly, and then we added 10 through our function, that, that update value function that we had. Okay, so that's a bit about these inline variables and how we can use them with our you know, things like global variables. Um, like I said, as, as well, there are many different ways that you can handle problems like this. So you can, you know, do things like have extern ints and then have the actual definition inside of a source file that you link against, or you can use things like these, this inline specifier. Now, as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.